Welcome to this week's IoT Radar, a special edition, an edition with some news facts and some new technologies which I think you might be interested in. I have collected them on the IoT Radar page on LinkedIn, so you can go there and have a closer look at what it is. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is this one, it's the Graphene Flagship. And Graphene Flagship is a European initiative to stimulate new developments and new applications of Graphene. Graphene is a super material. It's 2D, two-dimensional, you understand. And together with the semiconductor, researchers think that it has tremendous new opportunities. Now, graphene and semiconductor material, they're in two different worlds, it seems. So it's really difficult to bring these two materials together. Now, researchers are proposing a new way to actually glue them together in a relatively easy way and allowing it to have graphene implemented on the semiconductor material in the semiconductor production process. So that means that graphene can be brought onto semiconductor material in high quantities. And that opens up complete new applications and complete new uh, products which have super material characteristics. The other interesting thing I found is, is this one. It's not big news, but it's small news, but it's interesting news. Um, you, all, you all might have heard about uh, RP2040, which is the new silicon uh, Raspberry Pi started developing and is now implemented on their new Pico product. Interestingly enough, the new Arduino Nano, Nano, Pico, you know it, you got it, also has this new RP2040 semiconductor. So, two worlds, Raspberry Pi, Arduino. They come together on silicon, which I think is an interesting development. So, Jeremy, <laughs> we're not going to talk about where we are or what the weather is, but I was reading your article about the Arduino Nano, and I must admit, you know, probably you are a fan of the Arduino Nano. You're using it quite often, I think. Sure, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Arduino Nano. I mean, I, you know, I liked all the Arduino boards, but it, it seems like the Nano... Especially, you know, it's it's small, it's easy to program, it's it's got all the capabilities of an Arduino Uno, but, you know, just in a smaller package. So it's it's really a great, uh, you know, just for basic tasks, it's just great to put it on a project and let it go. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's a special uh, special uh, small board, for relatively cheap also. Uh, you, you're using it quite often, but you also recognize some uh, limitation. That is what I got for you from your article. <laughs> Sure. So yeah, I've got a little Arduino Nano here. It's probably not doesn't show up too well on the camera, I would assume. But you know, it's a tiny board. It's great. But the problem is, you know, I guess one, I guess with this, I had several things that I'd like to like to see out of it. I mean, first of all, when you're trying to hook up a, a project with this, you're always it always seems like you're running out of ground ground and power pins, five volt pins especially. Mm -hmm. Other thing is, you know, I come from an industrial background, and pretty much always you use screw terminals or uh, spring terminals. So you just plug things in, screw it, really secure, it's really great. The, na the Nano, for its, for its part, you've either got to solder things onto it or plug in uh, female headers. And, and that's fine, but it works fine, but I guess, I guess I always thought I wanted something a little bit different. Yeah. And um, you know, over the last year or so, I've been learning uh, PCB design, printed circuit board design, uh, namely, KiCad or KiCad. I'm not sure quite how you pronounce it. <laughs> no <but> one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. Um, but I've been learning that, and as I've been doing that, I realized, well, you know, all these things that I wanted out of an Arduino Nano, you know, I, I can just build it myself. I can make it and have it professionally built by a company in, um, you know, either America, China, wherever. Several. There's several companies that'll do it, and it's 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 great. Sure. Just yeah, competition. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, some some people will say, you know, the the Arduino Nano is just, is just a small development board. You know, you do a development, and then basically later on you do an implementation. The the Nano itself is not so much designed for perhaps industrial applications, but you actually 
think it is possible to have a nano in this form and this size and with your annotation can be used for industrial applications? Well, I, I would just say I believe Arduino doesn't necessarily certify the nano for you know heavy industrial use. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily hook it up to a machine to you know say to control a, a million dollar uh, <laughs> assembly cell. I, I think that'd be kind of you know maybe a little bit silly. I mean maybe, maybe it would work, maybe not. But you know Why certainly not? there's <laughs> yeah certainly there's not somebody you know you go with Allen Bradley or Siemens. You know, if your if your PLC doesn't work, you've got somebody to complain to. You know, yeah. Arduino. I, I mean, not that they're they're great boards, of course. But I'm, obviously, I'm a fan, but yeah, I, I guess I'd be um, I'd be hesitant with that. That yeah. that being said, you know, I, I did make a um, adapter for it. So this, um, I guess, the adapter that I made, I call it the ground ground Uino. Okay. So it 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 adds. Um, it adds uh, five extra ground pins and, and five extra five volt pins, as well as a 3.3 volt, uh, as well as four, four more 3.3 volt pins, or space for a 2200 microfarad capacitor, or radio, any sort of capacitor that you want, really. And um, okay. the reason for. Now, yeah, can, can I ask the, 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 the five volts and the 3.3 volts, et cetera, are they taken from the Arduino board itself, or are you? Having sort of an external solution for that as well. Are you providing, or is it just directly taken from from the Arduino board? And sure, sure. everything's a breakout for the Arduino pins. Now the, okay. the five volts can be supplied externally, so it powers the Arduino and everything else. So really, however you however you hook it up is how it's it's powered. So sure. so yes, yeah. the five volt may come from externally, or it can come from the USB power supply, depending on how you have it wired. Yeah, all right. So, I see. I see. And and the capacitor, where, where is that for? Sure. So the capacitor, I guess that was honestly that was a bit of an afterthought. But um, I had a little bit of extra space on the board once I ended up putting the screw terminals on and everything. So I'm like, well, you know, I've got space here, so I can either put either put space for a 3.3 volt pin, which which I which I did four extra pins for that, mm -hmm. or I could also put extra space for a capacitor. So with the capacitor here. If you've ever used um, pro programmable LEDs like WS28112, 2811, 20, etc., so some guides, or I guess in particular one guide, the, Ad the Adafruit um, guide to using these, they recommend a, a uh, capacitor in that to even out voltage spikes. Well, you know, I, I you don't really have to have that, and I think a lot of people just neglect it, including myself. So I was like, well, if... Uh, if I'm going to be using it, I might as well just have space for it here. I might as well put a capacitor on it, make make it easy for everybody. Okay. So I guess that's which is good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we're looking forward so, for some new projects, perhaps in the near future. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm always always working on something. I've got always got twenty or so floating around my head somewhere. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, good luck, and uh, thank you very much for the explanation. I enjoyed it. Hey, thank you very much. Great to talk to you. If you follow the hydrogen revolution, which by the way you should, you must have noticed the announcement of this new material. It looks like a DIY paste to glue the tiles in your bathroom, but in reality you're looking at a new hydrogen form, power paste. Hydrogen is one of the most interesting candidates for our future energy needs. It can store the energy produced by windmills, solar cells and other electricity generators. A fuel cell can be used to win the electricity back. The backdrop is that hydrogen in its purest form needs a high pressure tank. This is ok if you want to use it to get a bus or a car moving, but not so much for lighter applications like a scooter, a smaller car or even a bike. Researchers from the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing Technology and Advanced Materials IFAM in Dresden have now come up with a hydrogen based fuel that is ideal for small vehicles, power paste, which is based on solid magnesium hydride. More research will be needed to turn this discovery into a real life application, but this can be clearly a winner on the sustainable energy front.